Okay. So a lot of this has to do with, first of all, you have to have a website that is linked to you locally. And so many times, um, you know, when I'm talking to someone, that's the first discussion we have as far as branding. And, you know, we do a lot of podcasts and things like that. So it's like, where are you at with your branding? And so many have their, their, their website is their application page. That's not going to work. Hello and welcome to another episode of Mortgage Influencers, where we bring you professionals who share insight into the latest trends, tips, industry technology, and services to help you be a mortgage influencer in your mortgage business. Well, hi there. Welcome to another episode of Mortgage Influencers. Today's Wednesday and I am so so excited for our conversation today. My name is Ginger Bell. I have Scott Shang with me. Hey, Scott. Hello. I'm not sure where Steve is. Steve is uh, MIA today. He's probably flying somewhere. High flying. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But uh, we're going to jump right in because we've got 30 minutes of amazing content with uh one of the smartest, uh, most insightful, influencing type individuals for not just the mortgage industry, but I know you do in other industries as well. But anytime I have an opportunity to uh, listen to Chris, um, I have my notebook out. I'm ready to take notes because what you do, my friend, is absolutely amazing. So we want to welcome Chris Johnstone with Connections Incorporated. Hey, Chris. Hey, Thanks for having me. It is phenomenal to be here. And uh, and hey, Scott. Hey, Chris. Good to see you again, buddy. <laughs> hey, well, hopefully you're going to catch up. You're froze a little bit, Scott. I don't know yeah. if you see that too. Yeah, so. yeah. No, I was seeing that too. His audio is coming through, but the, the video was frozen. It yeah. Was like, let's, yeah. Let's give that we're, a shot. We're going across country lines. We're going to let Chris get back on. So Chris is actually <laughs> um, in our our neighbor in our neighboring friend country um, in Canada, and uh, and so we'll let he's him closer get neighbor back to on. you than he is to me, but he's yeah, neighbor to the north. <laughs> Here, we'll just do it this way. It's much darker this way, but uh, not laggy. So uh, there we go. It's funny how that goes. So mm. uh, so thanks for joining us, Chris. Um, for those of you who are listening, if you don't know Chris, you need to know Chris. Uh, he has helped so many uh, individual loan officers, companies to be able to really uh, streamline their processes, get onto the the SEO, which I know we're going to talk about some of that with AI today. So if you don't know him, you need to know him. So we're going to jump into AI. And I listened yesterday to a podcast, uh, Scott and Chris, that you all did talking about AI. And, uh, you know, if, if you haven't jumped into AI, Scott, you have a great series that you have been doing uh, on tools to use. And so really start listening to the podcast, pay attention to things that are going on. I'm just launching a website called AI Beehive, and it's a directory of uh, different uh, tools, whether it's a plugin, whether it's an actual service. Uh, Chris, I actually just put your, your company on there. Scott, I need to get your content up there. Um, but I was getting emails from people saying, you know, hey, what service can I use for this? And after about, you know, the the sixth email in a row, it's like, okay, I'm just going to throw it <laughs> out to a directory and uh, and get people there. So, uh, so that's what we're in. So, Chris, before we get started, tell me, tell our audience a little bit about you and your company and the services you provide. Yeah, for sure. So we've been marketing in the mortgage industry for 15 years now. Um, and what we originally started doing was I was a mortgage broker. I worked for my dad's mortgage business and I was on the rate sheets and donut circuit. And at, I was 23, 24 years old at that point. And uh, you can all guess how well that went for me, hanging out in lobbies of real estate offices, handing out rate sheets and donuts. And I was looking for a better way to leverage those relationships. And I discovered advertising on Google. And I've always been a nerd. You know, I've always been awkwardly funny. Um, and so technology has always been in my back pocket. And that's where it really came to the forefront. So building websites, driving traffic on Google, back when traffic was five cents a click. And so that evolved to, okay, Google, is the number one driver of business how do we go get that organically so we had a product gosh 10 years ago 
called local Google traffic, getting oh. mortgage lenders on the front. Chris, I think Google. we lost. Did we lose you for a minute? No, I'm can, still here. I can still see him and hear him. Yeah. If, if you can't, Ginger, it might be you. We might be having okay, just internet second. problems. Oh, oh, I can't hear you either, Scott. Oh, I. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I could hear and I could see and hear Chris fine. But now his camera just cut out. No, no, it wasn't cut out. I'm in the background checking my settings. Ginger. Okay, oh, good. Okay, Thank there you, you go. We got now we're you. all back. We're all back. <laughs> yeah, no, I should be all good on my side. I'm good to go. So awesome. anyways, background, figured out Google. And Google has been through four big shifts with the way that their algorithm works. And the most recent one is the shift from actual like engineers writing algorithms to determine how the front page looks and who shows up and who gets the customers to now that's all being powered by AI and it has changed everything. So we are in the midst of trying to get to as many people in the mortgage industry and saying, okay, look, we can help two people per market. AI has changed everything. And that Google map placement, not talking about just like organic rankings, but getting on the map, engaging your past customers with AI using CRMs and doesn't matter what CRM you use, right? But get out to your past customers. Now is a great time to be doing that. Get as many five-star reviews as you possibly can on your Google business profile, and then use AI to become an authority with Google, get placed in the map placement, highest quality inbound phone calls that you can generate from lead gen. Cause we've done Facebook ads, Google ads, you name it. We've run ads on it and generated leads from it. And there's a fundamental difference between getting a lead and chasing it, right? We all know what happens when you chase somebody, they run, <laughs> right? Whereas what AI is able to do now is they have all of the data of all of the searches of all of the conversions that have ever happened on the internet ever, right? Cause they have Google analytics. Like right. every single website is hooked up and giving them their data. So they know what people type into the search engine, where they go, what they read, how long they stay there, and when they actually start filling out forms, but most importantly, when they want to make a phone call and talk to a local mortgage lender. So if you go on and you search for a mortgage calculator, you get a whole bunch of mortgage calculators, no local businesses show up on that search. Well, that just changed when AI took over. Now, why is that? It's because the AI has all of the data for where all of the conversions come from and people that are searching for a mortgage calculator are not yet ready to do a deal or talk to a mortgage lender. But if you type in an actual buying phrase of somebody who is ready to pick up the phone and is ready to talk to a mortgage lender, AI has gotten rid of all the ads at the top and placed the three pack front and center with the ratings and reviews. Okay. I want to back into that because that's huge. Mm -hmm. and, and especially for those who have always been like, well, I'm, you know, if you put in market cal calculator, it's going to be like three pages of ads. And so now what you're saying is that has completely changed. Yep. Absolutely. That's huge. It's, it's massive because I believe what Google has programmed their algorithm, because you've got data and then you have a prompt. Nobody really knows what AI does in the middle to get the end result of what AI does, right? It's like you give it all the data, you give it a prompt, and then it spits out the end result. Right. But really, truly, very few people on the planet know what actually happens in the middle. So what Google has determined is like, okay, these search phrases have all the customers, and these people are the ones that are making a phone call. And that's an inbound lead. So you're not chasing those people. Those people are going to Google, looking for a mortgage lender, reading the reviews and calling. There's no chasing. All you have to do is pick up the phone, take a nap, close the deal. Our good friend, you know, Carl, uh, we did a podcast together. His team is funding anywhere from like 12 to up to 17% of the inbound phone calls that come in actually fund. So compare that to like, Wow. buying leads or Facebook or any of these other chase type marketing. And it's just night and day. Yeah. So I have a question as far as that. So I, I live in Portland, Oregon. So if I go in and put in, you know, mortgage lender, or I want a mortgage and Google's going to know where I'm at if I'm allowing it. Right. So what you're saying is 
that Google is going to suggest local lenders on the map in my area first before all the ads. Correct. Okay. Chris, have you noticed, do, do, do they rank them by number of reviews or is the number of reviews just going to help you stand out amongst the three bags? Oh, phenomenal question. So no, the reviews really don't matter to where you show up in the ranking. We see, uh, you know, we've, there is actually a company in Texas that has 1,700 five-star ratings and reviews, and they're on page two of Google. So we know it's not the ratings and reviews. It's the authority with the search engine. And that's basically done with, we now know three things. So we've reverse engineered, like we have people in California, Florida, Texas, Memphis. Um, if you take, you know, across the border, we've ranked in Toronto and Vancouver, the two largest and most competitive marketplaces all in the last 120 days using basically these four things. So the first is Q and A. So Ginger, if you take a look and you do that search, right. the ads are gone. The three pack is up there. And then somewhere on that front page, normally, and in the larger markets, it's directly underneath the map placement. It says people also ask or frequently asked questions. They keep changing the names on it, okay. but it's like, it's the AI is actually taking the most frequently asked questions that Google's getting <laughs> in that location, specific to people in that location wow. and showing the questions right on the front page. Well, at the same time, they've released a feature on your Google business profile that says questions and answers. And they're trying to get people to go to Google business profiles, ask the questions so that business owners can then respond to them. So what we've done is we've got a whole bunch of profiles out there on Google. They're asking questions all day. We take the most frequently asked questions, ask them on our clients accounts, and then we use AI to write the responses so AI reads the AI response and goes, that's a really good response. And we <laughs> build authority with Google through the Q&A panel. Okay. AI so says, I recognize AI. that guy. He's smart. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> We're going to double down on him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So a lot of this has to do with, first of all, you have to have a website that yeah. is linked to you locally. And so many times... Um, you know, when I'm talking to someone, that's the first discussion we have as far as branding. And, you know, we do a lot of podcasts and things like that. So it's like, where are you at with your branding? And so many have their, their, their website is their application page. That's not going to work. Or their homepage. Or their, their <laughs> so homepage. The two worst things that it could be. Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> really this is rethinking. And so this is one of those things. First of all, y'all need to brand yourself. Yep. Um, and, and honestly, in my opinion, I think that they should have their own website. Now you can have the links to the company website, blah, 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 meet compliance, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but you should have your own brand, your own website, obviously putting video on there, putting blog posts on there, all those things, Scott, that you've done for so many years, um, having that on there, but now making sure on your Google business page that your having those questions and answers, does it help to have like an FAQ section on your Google business page? Um, so on your website, the FAQ page really helps. Another okay. page that we've discovered is exceptionally important is an about us page and really diving into who you are, how long you've been in business, all of the different charitable organizations that you're part of, like the deeper you can get your about me page with outbound links to all your social media, as much of that footprint that you can put out there because Google's looking for authoritative figures to, to, to feature, right? And you do that through content and then also footprint. Um, and then so having a phenomenal about us page and then that also comes to backlinks and that's, you know, networking with realtors, financial planners. So Ginger, your podcast strategy, having people onto your show that are local realtors, financial planners, that sort of thing, you bring them onto your podcast. Well, all of a sudden now you've got a backlinking relationship between those two parties and you can go out and you can show Google, Hey, here's a realtor I'm connected to. Here's a financial planner I'm connected to. And every single one of those referral partners that you have that places a little link 
on their website and directs back to your website, that's an authority signal to Google that since that significantly can move you in the rankings because it's also something that an SEO company can't duplicate. Interesting. So let's talk about some of the AI because I know you have, first of all, you're not doing Facebook ads anymore. I heard you say that. Correct. Okay. So, and, and it gets down to one of those, you know, what, what has worked in the past is not necessarily going to work right now. Um, so changing that strategy is important. So be aware of that. And so having that strategy and doing the SEO, tell me what you've done with your AI and how you're helping mortgage companies to be able to leverage this. A hundred percent. And so there are three ways to grow a mortgage business, basically, right? I'll, and, but everything gets lumped into three categories, database, referral partners, and then marketing and advertising. We all know that if we were to have a hundred mortgage lenders on this call with us and we did a survey and we said, have you called your past customers in the last 90 days? How many of them would put their hands up? Based on my surveys that I've done, it's about 2%. Like that actually like pick up the phone, make a connection and actually connect with their past customer database. Most of them are relying on an email newsletter, not even relying on text. What we do is omni-channel messaging powered by AI. Okay. So this is super cool. We'll, we'll nerd out on a couple of, of tools here. <laughs> um, actually, let me go back. Let me finish the three. Cause I want to kind of button button up how the whole thing works. So people okay. get the larger picture and then we'll go deeper into each one. So your database marketing, you need to be sending out a database marketing piece. I like once a month in our product, we do it every 90 days because we're trying to get ratings and reviews on the Google business profile but we're actually using chat GPT with a CRM so that all of the conversations are automated and only the conversations that are like, yes, I have a referral for you. Yes, I would like to speak with you. Hey, how do I get on your calendar? We're either automatically booking that appointment or texting the loan officer and saying, hey, this person really wants to talk to you. Everything else is actually filtered out by the AI and all the conversations are happening automatically with the AI. So database marketing, there's no reason to not be doing that anymore. Then we've got a referral partner strategy. So two things, when you're generating inbound leads from Google, they're exceptionally high quality. That generates applications. When you do your database marketing properly, that generates applications. We all know that a referral partner, the best way to open up a relationship and actually get referrals from them is to bring them an application, mm -hmm. right? The second best thing that you can bring them is value to showcase them through a podcast or through video like you do, Scott, right? So what we do is we have the a third best way donuts now. <laughs> <laughs> Just Only in. donuts with rate sheets. Just check it. <laughs> Uh, a pretty, actually, that'd be funny. Old school. <laughs> right? right? Right. An AI robot that shows up at the office and delivers donuts for you. A drone <laughs> delivers it. <laughs> yes. um, so what we do is we teach a process that when you take every application and, and uh, Tim Brahim, I learned this from him and uh, also a shout out to Larry Olivieri because he's also a genius who has also shared this strategy with me uh, on our podcast or through our podcast, I should say. Um, what you do is every application that you take, you have a survey. And on that survey, you ask, okay, you're, you're now part of our, our wealth strategy. We're not just gonna get you a loan. We're gonna work with you for life to make sure that you have your finances in place and that this is a journey to wealth for you. Who's your real estate agent? Who's your financial planner? Who's your investment advisor? Who does your taxes? Who's your accountant? Who's your bookkeeper? What title company are you gonna use? And we have a survey inside our CRM. And as soon as you take an application from somebody, you tag them with application taken, and it sends out a follow-up sequence that says one more thing. We need you to fill out this information. What that does is it gives you two lists, the people that they're working with and the people they're not working with, right? One campaign goes out to the people they're working with where it reaches out and says, hey, Mr. Realtor, we just took an application from XYZ client that's working with you. They had some great things to say about you and we're always looking to expand our referral network. Do you have 15 minutes 
to discuss our client together, right? It's almost an offer that they can't refuse because you're reaching out because you have a relationship with an existing client. Now, the list that you get of professionals they don't have, you should have a list of realtors, financial planners, investment advisors, tax advisors, divorce attorneys. Well, maybe not divorce attorneys on the application, but you get what I'm saying. You should have a list of the five top people that you're trying to do business with in every single marketplace, and they sit in a list in your CRM. And every time you get an application from somebody that doesn't have a relationship with a financial advisor, you drop them into a campaign and it reaches out to the financial advisor and it says, hey, it's Chris. I just took an application from somebody that doesn't have a relationship with a financial advisor. And I'm wondering if you would be a good fit to meet with that client. Do you have 15 minutes so we can get to know each other? You've always been somebody I've respected in the industry, and I would love to have that relationship with you. Now, AI is on the back end of that conversation. So if that, if anybody responds to that campaign, it goes into ChatGPT. ChatGPT reads the response has a prompt based on, I'm a mortgage lender, this is the goal of this campaign, this is how we're gonna respond to all of these people. It puts the response back into the CRM and then the CRM follows up. Now you can watch that conversation in real time, but it's instant. So that person is communicating with your bot in and out of your CRM and ChatGPT in order for you to then get the, yeah, I'd like to meet. Okay, great, right? And so every application that you take, you should be following up and saying, hey, at multiple stages throughout the process. Do you have any friends, family members or coworkers that are looking to buy, sell or refinance, right? Huge shout out to the mortgage marketing animals, Carl White and Steve Kyles. That's their scripting. It works. You just have to say the words when you are on the phone with the people at the different stages of the application process, you will get referrals. I had uh, um, a a good top 10 broker um, whose name I won't mention on the podcast, but he's about to go live on our podcast. And he says for every one application that he gets, he gets four referrals, every single one using the mortgage marketing animals script. Because it becomes a habit. And when it becomes a habit and you don't have to think about it, it doesn't feel awkward. And that is one of the most powerful things. Uh, And I know because Carl, it's just, it's so natural for him. And so, and I've seen this with people when they start using it and it becomes just a part of standard, people know that it's a part of you. It's like, oh, of course, you know, I want to be able to, to send you people because I want them to be taken care of, which is the greatest thing. So yes, Carl, Carl, and all of them at Mortgage Marketing Animals. Well, and, not- I would also, and I would also say that's about the earliest point of entry, because if you, if you get their application, you've earned their trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not going to give you their application if you haven't earned your trust. So that's really the first trust hurdle that you're going to have. And that's the best time since they're, they're, you know, they're at the highest level of trust. Yes. I'll give you all my personal information. Oh, by the way, this is just part of my process. And you have to ask, like, that's the biggest thing, right? You just have to ask. Like, what's the worst they're going to say is, is I don't really have anybody right now. Great. I could probably introduce you to somebody if that need comes up or if we determine that's something that could help you. Right. So even the worst case scenario, I don't have anybody, you know, I don't have any financial partners or anybody like that I'm working with. Well, great. I can help you with that. Exactly. Yeah. The the, yeah. the other thing I wanted to unpack real quick, Chris, they, that is so brilliant with your strategy is people got to have to understand what the market is today. And yeah. the market today is only consumers that have some sort of emotional driver that's forcing them to be in the business or forcing them to be in market. It's either divorce or divorce, diapers, diamonds, or death, right? It's like the four Ds. <laughs> like there's one of those things. And And so when you're doing advertising, this one-to-many just spray and pray doesn't work. But what you're doing is you're capturing the people that are in market. The people that are in market, they have something specific that they're trying to solve. I just got moved from my employer. I have to move, right? My This happened, that happened. I have to move. Nobody's been waiting on the sidelines saying, man, Rates and prices finally got to where I wanted them to be. I'm jumping in with both feet. And and you could almost argue, well, okay, well, then why wouldn't you do Google ads? Well, cool. But if you stop paying, you stop getting the calls. 
But what you're doing is you're building an organic inbound revenue machine that once it's built, it just always works because you're building on top of it. And it's now it's, it's right. And it's out there. So I mean, I could, I'm always blown away by what you're doing. And, um, and I actually had an opportunity. One of my, one of my friends saw our podcast and he had his discovery call, his onboarding call yesterday, and he invited me to it. And so I got to see a little bit under the hood of what you guys, how, what your process is. And, and man, I just got to say, nailed it. You'd like, I love what you, I love, I've always loved what you do, but <laughs> like, I have a whole new appreciation for your ability to pivot so quickly with the technology and the market, all of it. You're so far ahead of the curve. I hope people are listening to this and paying attention to this um, because this is one of the smartest strategies you can, you could do in this market. Yeah. And it is a strategy. So to recap, take an application and then put them into the CRM, send them a survey, ask them who they have relationships, tell them that, uh, you know, if they have anyone that, that, you know, wants to buy, sell or refinance. So we have that set up in the CRM, the CRM automates it. And I think that's the key, Chris, because the more you can automate your business, the more it's going to work. So continue yeah. on from there. So, and the whole point of that is starting a relationship based relationship, value based relationship, what I was looking for there, <laughs> so that you can get a inbound referral partners from every application that you take, but starting those relationships in a way where you can ask them for a five star review on your Google profile. So you're getting five star reviews from customers. You're getting inbound new referral partners with an offer that actually makes sense. And then you're getting ref referral partners to leave you five star reviews on Google. And then you go out to direct to marketing. So your past customer database, your referral partners, and then direct to consumer advertising. The only form of direct advertising that I have found in the mortgage industry where people call you pre sold on working with you is Google. So there's a phenomenal study out there that shows that 11.1% of Americans used a search engine to find their mortgage lender last year. That's massive. The only other two that beat it are referrals from friends and family and referrals from referral partners, realtors and other sources. Google is the third oh, referral 35 partner. 35 million people. Yeah. 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 That's, it's insane. And I'm going to throw YouTube in there too, because I think a lot of people sure. forget that although, in, and we've had a lot of our clients who have gotten direct applications from the videos they're putting out on YouTube. And so, you know, have, and again, part of that so the whole strategy, and it's not just one, it's not just, yeah. okay, this is what I'm going to do. You and need YouTube to have is owned by Google. And so they put right. Google, they put your Google videos right on the front page. So it all just ties in together. Yep. Yep. And the other point of how we've seen AI, just like how wicked smart it really is, is your past customers, when they get referred by somebody in your database, when they refer somebody to your business, they Google your name, mm -hmm. right? Then they Google your name with mortgage lender. Well, the AI is smart enough to associate that user behavior with the fact that those people actually want to talk to you about a mortgage and they'll actually follow them with your Google business page because they've searched for you, right? That's so so cool. <laughs> the same thing with referral partners. If you have realtors that are referring you business, what are those people doing? You bet your bottom dollar, they're going to go on Google and they're going to Google you. And what are they, what are they looking for? Ratings and reviews. Well, Google is also smart enough where they see somebody searching for a mortgage lender that's got two ratings and reviews. You bet they're going to show them the one that's got 65 or 100 or 125 because they think, oh, wait, this person might have a better option to work with in the local marketplace. And the more authority that you build with Google, you get exposed not only to people that are finding you and doing a better job of selling those people, but all the people that are searching for other mortgage lenders online. If you're the authority, Google's also going to take you and put you in their feeds, which is incredibly important. And we didn't even touch on the fact that ChatGPT is a search engine. And moving forward in the next world, people are going to migrate away from search. So what Amazon just invested, what, like $30 billion in Azoic, right? 
So Amazon is trying to find an AI platform so that they can compete with Google and Bard and Microsoft and ChatGPT, right? These are the new search engines. People just haven't figured it out yet. And this is your opportunity to get in front of AI based chat assistant search. It's like, there's a new search engine coming and nobody even knows it yet. <laughs> and we're already feeding data into that algorithm or into that artificial intelligence system. So that our clients are going to win on that platform in the future as well. I know we're hard up on time, but Ginger and Scott, I, I wanted to make sure that I a said this correctly and B that I shared it with our audience. Google this Google CEO direct quote. AI is more important than fire or electricity. Wow. Think about that statement for just a moment. Google arguably still the most powerful company in the world. The most powerful dude running the most powerful company. AI is more impactful than fire and electricity. We still don't know all of the systems that make our world work today that are powered by AI. The first AI engine was implemented in 1947. Yeah. And, and people don't realize that. I did a webinar for ArchMI last month, and I went through the history of AI briefly because people think it's something new. And it's honestly been in the works for a long time. We have been using it for a long time. So if you're fearful of it, you need to get over the fear. If you don't know where to start, what I recommend is Scott has done an amazing job over the last few months, really diving in, you know, whether it's Bard, whether it's um, Claude and, you know, obviously wow. chat, all those things constantly changing. So spend a little bit of time, mark it on your calendar, go and watch some of these educate yourself. I'm doing another webinar in two weeks with ArchMI. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to do, similar to what you've been doing as far as that strategy, Scott, is going through how to create an entire first-time homebuyer um, marketing campaign. So what they need to think about, where you can use it, writing the video scripts, doing the blog posts, and then the SEO. Chris, we want to have you back. I mean, we could honestly go on all day. This Love geeking out with you. a special edition that it goes Yeah, around. I think we need to have you back every <laughs> month, my friend. But so it's important for you, if you're listening, if you're watching, to pay attention to what Chris is saying to really at this, this is, this is an opportunity right now as things have slowed down in our industry. This is when you make those changes. Yep. This is when you say, Hey, I need to up my game. Hey, I need to redo my website. Hey, I need to do my branding. Hey, I need to start a podcast. You know, those are kind of things that all go together that can work into what Chris is talking about. And then the other thing I would really recommend that you do is set up a call with Chris's team. So how can they get in touch with you, Chris? Connectionincorporated.com. No S. Connection incorporated.com. We got a brand new website launched yesterday. Awesome. Very on good. there. Opt in form on the footer, fill it out. And uh, that, that is the easiest way. If people are looking for um, SEO specific information, it's AI SEO dot connection incorporated.com. Okay. Um, but fill out the form, reach out and uh, we are happy to help. Awesome. Well, and we'll drop the links below too, as well. Um, but Chris, thank you so much. It is always so great to see you, my friend. And uh, you are so smart. It's one of those things. I honestly, it's like, I cannot wait for today. I get to listen to Chris. So, uh, so thank you. Thank you so much for really serving our industry and uh, being able to, to, to figure out what that next move is and make it easy for us. We appreciate that. Well, I'm honored to be here with both of you. I think uh, uh, there's a, an old saying out there, you become the five people that you spend the most time with and you always want to be the stupidest person in the room. And uh, it's been an honor being the stupidest person in the room with the two of you today. So, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, that's not the case, but thank you for that. Okay, so if you're watching us live, um, we will not have a show next week. We are all traveling, so uh, we will not have a live show next week. Um, but more information to follow. And uh, thank you so much. You guys go make it a great day. Bye, much love. Bye. Yeah, bye.